Hello and welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. I am at the Marquez farmhouse right now. And I'm going to back on Route Zero. Um, last time we talked to Marquez and she showed us, or she told us the path to the next place. I don't know. I forget what place it was. <laughs> it's been a few interesting not bad music Just like that. So hold on here a second. There. It's a little bit loud. And I'm using my other uh, recording software and I can't change the volume of my voice or the background voice, background stuff. Uh, time to go. On Route Zero. Oh, okay, I thought for a second there it wasn't gonna go. Um, 65 North and next to a factory. Um, Turnpike Road? Is that it? Is a to the right? The artificial limb. Maybe I should go back on 65. Interstate 65. Is that where I was supposed to go? Factory. There we go. Creek runs alongside the highway and then turns toward a dirty brick building. A grinding, grinding drone from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate smokestacks. The edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign partly obscured by trees, reads A Mare Tificial Limb Factory. I guess that's American. Oh, yeah, I, like, I love that little symbol for when you're moving. Um, it's to the right of it? On ramp. Okay, there we go. This is the only thing to the right that I can see. Hope you enjoyed, oh, act one, scene three. We're on the next scene. And I'm not sure how many, I think probably four scenes seems about right to me anyways. And I don't know. So talk to Homer. Brushes some dirt from off Homer's hat. How's it going, Homer? Huh, not sure the ladies was right about the on-ramp to zero to bring you here. Got something on your hat. Did you pick that up on the road? Where did we stop on the road? Oh yeah, I guess the Marquez. Don't you ever get tired of nosing around strange places? You like it out here, don't you? Picking up strange dirt on the road. Let's go in. Whatever this is. Said on ramp. This look like an on ramp to you? Looks like a cave. Oh wow, that was it, huh? Scene four. So maybe this isn't the last one. Because that. It's got to last longer than that. I don't know how long this whole game is, but... Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Am, am I Shannon now? It's $200 for two weeks. Yeah, it's kind of... It's an emergency. 
I don't know what I'm talking about. Is it an emergency? <laughs> Inaudible. That's true. I guess he can't kick me out for another week or two, but I can't trust him. He's not to just change the locks. Uh, what am I talking about? <laughs> yes, and I appreciate that, but... Okay, you're right. Just never mind. I have to go. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. Forget it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. No work tomorrow? It ends backwards. Looks like an end. Okay, I'm Shannon now. Yeah. And I don't get choices for Conway. Now I get choices for Shannon. Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on and I'm looking for the round on ramp to are you here to kick me off my property? Do you believe in ghosts? I'd like to know if he believes in ghosts. Well, let's see. I do believe in a place can be haunted, if that's what you mean. What about a person? Can a person be haunted? No, that's not what I mean. Well, okay, I've run across a few people who acted like ghosts. Kind of there, kind of somewhere else. What brings you to this old mine tonight? Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lisette's Antiques, and I'm out trying to finish this job. Are you going to deliver to the mine? Oh, uh, no. I have a delivery for Five Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now I heard I need, heard I need to take the highway called the Zero. So I met this young lady of the name of Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way. So uh, here I am, an uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like for so far anyway. With what? Uh, Weaver Marquez, a zero. Do you, does she know her? So you saw her tonight. I know Weaver. She's, she was... She's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marcus. She said she was. So she's dead. And that would explain why she disappeared. She tricked me? Oh, she tricked him into going to her cousin. You're the one that fixes televisions. That's right. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Weaver doesn't lie. One time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was a crushing metal everywhere, and we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying, and then my dad walked in the door. Just come back from a trip to the junkyard, collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke, and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it was a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. Now she's saying she is, not was. So maybe the Zero is down here somewhere. So what are you doing down here? I talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or in a way, she talked to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. She talked to her Weaver, so she's not dead. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old and it is a her right yeah she I thought maybe it might be a guy because I don't know what the hell kind of name Weaver is it sounds more like a last name Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine she said I'd find something I'd been looking for where did you see Weaver In my workshop she just appeared I ain't seen her since a long time I don't know what she was going to say. Since what? Very mysterious surrounding this Weaver character. She just, and she just appeared? Huh. Not such a bad thing, you, show, you showing up. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Who said I'm going with you? Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. It's no place for me. It's an old mine. The room's pretty deep and tangled. We're going to keep going down, going to go 
down into it, find your on ramp or whatever else. We've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. I find an on ramp in there, really. I've got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put a signal out ahead, do some analysis and figure out what kind of topology we're against. I guess I'd have no choice, really. Those are really neat looking. This game's pretty simple, but what's going on? Oh. Simple is good sometimes. That runs into the mine's PA system. Do you think it still works? I'm Conway now. Do you think it still works? The line in the front says it's off. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay. Even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens, coal script, you know. And if you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. Jeez, what a crummy way of doing business. I mean, at work, you have to do, you have to pay for things. It's weird. Parents used to work here, so did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. Can we power it up? Maybe we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything is rationed here. Rationed. Here, set up the lamp of yours. I'll go unplug those ceiling lights. Conway clears his throat, tries to think of something clever to say. They just put the change in the clock. I don't know. I heard the speaker's back here crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try saying something in the mouthpiece. Well, is something... Okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels are run. Just to make some noises in the mouthpiece. Taps the mouth mouthpiece. Rubs a finger, clears his throat. Tap. Scrapes a coin across the mouthpiece, rocks on the table, knocks on the table, hums a deep tone. Conway spits, whistles, blows on the mouthpiece. Let's spit at it. Why not? Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with a cave system. All right, I set up my spectrum analyzer. So just say something into the mouthpiece and we can get sense for how narrow the mines are. Mine tunnels. Don't be shy, just say anything that comes to your head. Tell me a story about something or what did you have for breakfast today. Here's a story, I used to work on roof repair, I had breakfast, this, this set. Uh, my boss got a real big job in Louisville. We have picked up, fixed up a church roof once. Should have taken us an hour to get there. Seemed like a big project. But then a thunderstorm hit and it was too late anyhow. But I was too hung up over and we ran late. Too hung up. Hung over. Not up. Hung over. Got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. Hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Uh, you're probably used to it. One more test. You just need to know if the air is breathable or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. Connery breathes and thinks about the road. Breathes and thinks about resting. Think about the road. Breeze and remember that earlier in the day. Oh, that noise was kind of irritating. Breeze and remember when younger, moment when he's younger. Okay, there's a lot of noises going on. How screeching! 
getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Visualize a cold drink. Reason relax as a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. Oh no! Shit. What happened? Am I dead? Hello? Oh, we're on the next scene. Well, what do you know? Maybe I'll end it there. Um, we've gone through a few scenes now. It's... Oh, I guess I'll do a little more. Jesus, are you alright? What the hell? I, my leg is stuck? Shit, okay, I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get out of here. There you go, okay. Are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? It's fine. <laughs> is it really, though? Just try to stand up. Careful, I'm right here. Damn, don't worry, I've got you. The leg is in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. I'm onto the tram. There you go. Now let's see if this thing has power. Well, okay, there's some luck, right? Should be able to ride this tram right out of the auxiliary exits. If there are any, I think there are. What about Weaver? What about the on ramp? We'll just find the exit and then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. So the controls are over on the side, so let's get moving. I will end it there, as a matter of fact. It's been a good amount of time for me, I think. And we're just after one of the, I think, the fifth scene. So... We're still in Act 1, but I think we're getting pretty close to the end of Act 1, I mean. And yeah, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!